There's no time in the spirit. <laughs> no days either. <laughs> Today is Sunday. Welcome to Sunday Morning Live. The Word of God is worth the drive. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh, glory. How many of y'all know we are in a mighty time and season? It's a season of death. It's a season of glory. It's a season of victory. And it's a mighty season of a harvest that is happening and occurring right now. Glory to God. Would you turn to Galatians chapter 6, please? You know, there is a... Uh, in the gospel, there's a story about a woman that got caught in fornication. And uh, so the Old Testament talked about, you know, stoning a person to death. It was a law under Moses. But when Jesus came, because he came to fulfill the law and to bring the ministry of the Spirit, not of the letter anymore. And so... In the ministry of the Spirit, Jesus was changing things around. They brought this woman to, in front of Jesus, and they said, look at man, we caught her red-handed. I don't know what red-handed means, but you know. <laughs> they caught her, caught her in the act. And uh, they said, look, at, we're going to stone her to death, and uh, we want to know what you got to say about it. And they all had these stones. And he said to them, well, if any of you is not sin, you cast the first stone. And they all dropped the stones. And left. And Jesus said to the woman, where's your accusers? She said, none. He said, neither do I. He said something powerful. He said, go and sin no more. Or a worse thing will come upon you. Now, this is the ministry of the Spirit. Does everybody understand? Why? Because he's, he was explaining to her, and this, you're going to go, Sin no more. I'm going to give you the strength and power to no longer sin. So we've gone from sin no more to no, free from sin. Does everybody understand that? Free from sin. Turn to your neighbor and say you're free from sin. If you cooperate. Hallelujah. Galatians 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Galatians 6 and verse 7. Is everybody there? We're going to speak light. Do not be what? Deceived. Do not be deceived with Satan's greatest weapon? Deception. And his power is fear. That's how he gets everybody. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever man sows, he also will reap. So I want you to know something that nobody outruns reaping. Nobody. Whatever you sow, you're going to reap. That is a law from God Almighty for the believer and the non-believer. It doesn't matter. It's for every human on this planet. Whatever you sow, you will reap. The problem is now with those who don't believe and don't know, they will have to reap hard. But those who believe, God gives a way to outrun the reaping due to us. Does everybody get it? And he explains it right here. Watch this. In verse 8, are you ready? For he who sows to his flesh will reap corruption. We'll explain what the flesh is in a second. In other words, he who sows to the flesh is going to open the door to sin, to demonic forces. Because God isn't going to bring corruption on you. The powers of darkness do. So he who sows to the flesh will reap corruption. But he who sows to the what? The spirit will of the spirit reap what? everlasting life. So he shows us a way out. He said, and, and let us not grow weary while doing good. In other words, don't grow weary while you're sowing in the Spirit. For in due season we will reap if we do not lose heart. In other words, you're going to escape the reaping due to you if you continue to sow in the Spirit. This is a spiritual law that no man can come against. You can't dig under it, run around it, or hop over it. Everyone who sows will reap. 
But one of the things the Lord wants to do is take your reaping and turn it to the good. Amen. 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 Okay, so when you sow to the flesh, you're actually sowing to sin. <clears throat> you're committing sin. Sowing to the flesh will reap corruption. It's sin. Sin means the presence of evil. Sin is the presence of evil. There's three arenas. There's sin. There's transgression. Sin is the presence of evil. The presence of evil is trying to influence you to commit the act. When you commit the act, it's called a transgression. And you will reap from committing that act. It's called iniquity. And that is a curse that comes upon you and your family line. And until it is broken, but first it must be repented and be removed so that it stops going down to our children and our forefathers. Every one of us has inherited curses. The curse Jesus took away is sin and death. And hell. Does everybody understand it? To those who cooperate. So if you don't cooperate, are you free? No. You will still reap. Is everybody okay? Amen. So in this, there's an area where you and I must obey and we must cooperate with God. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Go to Galatians 5. Works of the flesh. Okay, here's a simple example. In verse 19, would you read it with me? Now the works of the flesh are what? Evident, Evident which are what? Adultery. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, and revel, revilers, and the like. Anything like this, he says, of which I tell you beforehand, just as also I told you in time past, that those who do what? Practice. Practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, you may call yourself a believer, but if you're still sowing in the flesh, you're not following, and there will be no entrance into eternal life. That lie of once saved, always saved, is a stinking lie from the devil. Right. Who you serve when you die is where you go. Amen? Amen? So he says, these are the works of the flesh. Why? Because sin is the presence of evil. Evil influence. You and I are battling that influence all the time. In 1 Corinthians 6. 1 Corinthians 6. In verse 9. Hallelujah. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. Do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? See, this, again, the only way that you're going to produce righteousness is by feeding off the tree of life. Now, there's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, so you'll become good and, right? There's a lot of good people out there. The problem is, is if they're not producing the fruits of righteousness, they have no excess home. God is a righteous God. He's a justice God. He's a loving God. But we bring it on ourselves. Does everybody get it? Amen. When we get before the Lord, He's not going to judge you according to the way that he sees the arena of your life. He's going to bring it before you to where you're going to judge yourself. Does everybody get it? Amen. That's why it's called the book of remembrance. He's going to say, here, I'm going to, because my, he can't come against his own word, can he? So he's going to open up the book of remembrance and say, look it. Now you'll bring judgment on yourself. Amen? Amen. Okay, let's go a little further. So there's an area of uh, make, manifesting the fruits of righteousness or unrighteousness. <clears throat> he says, do not be what? Deceived. There's that deception again. Why? Because evil influence wants to deceive all the time. And they don't want you to know that they're there. 
Do not be deceived, neither fornicators, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor homosexuals, nor sodomites, in other words, lesbians and transgenders and all the other, nor thieves, nor covet, covet, covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners will inherit the kingdom of God. <clears throat> now, this is the word of God. This is not a man's opinion, is it? And either you believe the word or you don't. So this is the word of God, and God does not come against his word. In other words, what he's saying, these are works of the flesh because of evil influence, evil presence. So many people don't think a believer can have a demon. It's incredible. Devils don't care whether you believe or not. They don't care. So they're always trying to influence us so that we open a door. Why? If you can so, if they can prevent, get you to cause the sow in the flesh, what happens? You reap corruption. How do you reap corruption? By opening the door to a devil. And this doesn't mean your head's going to spin and you're going to puke over it. You know. It means your something's got possession over one of your members. Usually over your tongue is the first thing. Over your thoughts. Over your attitude. Over any other thing, a part of your members. Does everybody get it? Amen. These are called works of the flesh. So in other words, the fullness of the character of Christ doesn't, has no possession yet. But the purpose of going through the process is so that we can allow the character of Christ to totally possess us. But that can't happen by just reading the word of God. He says, he who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood. That means there must be filling of the Spirit of God. Because he says the letter kills and the Spirit brings what? Life. Because we are in the ministry of the Spirit now. That's what Jesus brought. That's why he commanded them, do not leave the upper room until you're all baptized in the Holy Ghost. He's told 500 disciples that. 120 showed up, the other 280 started denominations. Or to be all one. There wouldn't be any denominations if everybody obeyed. Jesus is the commander, isn't he? Amen. This is a military operation. This isn't some kind of religious thing. It says he came into the world and was manifested in the flesh and in the physical realm to destroy the works of the devil, to rescue all those who were oppressed by the devil. And we're to continue to carry on that ministry. That's why he says the first thing that you and I should be able to do is cast out devils, remove them. So when you and I praise and worship, we're actually removing powers of darkness out of the presence so we can bring an atmosphere and make way for the Lord. That's why you sense peace. That's why sometimes you cry. And there's a joy. It's not sorrow. There's a freedom. That's why you laugh sometimes. Because in His presence is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. So we fight for the presence of God. Not for our life anymore. In Genesis chapter 4. Free from sin. Can somebody be free from sin? You betcha. Genesis chapter 4. <clears throat> Remember he said, go and sin no more. Well... Now it's free from sin. In Genesis 4, in verse 6. Is everybody there? Yeah. So the Lord said to Cain, Why are you angry and why has your countenance fallen? If you do well, if you cooperate, if you obey, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, Sin lies at the door. In other words, the presence of evil is always willing to come in. Amen. And its desire is what? For you. But you should rule over it. And that we should what? Rule over it. Now Cain talked with Abel, his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother, and did what? Killed, killed him. Wow. He killed him. Obviously, he didn't change his attitude. <laughs> then the Lord said to the king, where is your brother Abel? 
And he said, I do not know. Am I my brother's keeper? Did he lie? So we see two things. He became a murderer and a liar. And who is the father of lies and murder? Satan, presence of evil. Does everybody get it? If you do well, if you cooperate with God, his word, amen? And if you cooperate, what he says, eat my flesh and drink my blood, you shall have eternal life. And if you perform his will, because the word says those who do not perform his will will not enter the kingdom of God. If you do well, right? Of course, if you don't do well, it means you're rejecting the cooperation. You're rejecting the doctrine of truth. Amen? And you can't, and you're, because you're rejecting the doctrine, you're actually rejecting grace. Because grace means the plan of God to escape. It does mean, it has nothing to do with unmerited favor. It is unmerited love. Does everybody get it? You earn God's favor. That's by earning his trust. It isn't given to you. You earn it. Freedom's learned and trust is earned. Does everybody get this? God's grace is his plan to escape. The two things he wants you to escape from is the deception of the enemy and, his, and God's wrath. Because if you can't escape the deception of the enemy's tactics, you will fall under the wrath of God. Amen. Is everybody okay? Amen. Hallelujah. Evil will enter you, that evil presence. That's what he's telling them. It's going to torment you. But you should rule over it if you cooperate with Jesus. <laughs> because only he can bring freedom. Only the one that created you can free you. Other than that, you go into demon management. Amen. There's a difference between demon management and freedom. Many of us were in demon management. We've gone 12 step in programs and all kinds of trying to do. Gone, I mean, people go to psychics and all of this stuff trying to get demon management. And that's all they're doing is managing these demons, but eventually they're going to want a full course meal and they will take you out all over again. Because there's a difference between management and freedom. Amen? And Revelation 21. We should be free from sin. Free from sin means you have dominion. Revelation 21 and verse 6. And Jesus said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, and I will give the fountain of the water of life freely to him, him who what? Thirst. To be thirsty means that you drink. To be hungry means that you eat. Does everybody got it? To be thirsty means you drink of the Spirit. To be hungry means you eat of the Word. Verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexual immoral, sorcerers. This word sorcerer is also associated with addiction. Because addiction comes from the word pharmakia, which means black magic, witchcraft, and sorcery. Idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. In other words... Welcome to hell. Is everybody okay? Amen. Those who sow to the flesh shall reap corruption. Those who sow to the spirit. So is lying sowing to the flesh. Amen. Yes. Is manipulation sowing to the flesh. Amen. Is selfish ambition sowing to the flesh. Amen. Yes. See, that's why he gave us the, the law. The law of the spirit of life. And that law is deny yourself, pick up the cross and fight, pick up your sword and fight, and follow. That's the law we fulfill. 1 Samuel 15. So is rebellion sowing to the flesh. Amen. Disobedience. Amen. Yeah. In verse 17. Samuel 15, 17. Now there was a king, his name was Saul, he was the first king. The Lord tried to warn him. 
the Lord wanted to be their king, and they said, no, we want a carnal king. <clears throat> king Saul. And so the Lord, he's so cool, you know. He says, all right, I'm going to take this dude. I'm going to have him hang out with the prophets. I'm going to send him up to the high places so he can get filled with my spirit. Because he could not use that king unless he was filled with the spirit of God. So he sends him up there. And now all the prophets are up there prophesying. Next to Saul gets filled with the spirit and starts prophesying with them. And he became another man. And it said his heart changed. So Saul was obedient for a long period of time. But then he became in a place of compromise, complacency. He didn't stay filled with the Spirit. And in verse 17, And Samuel said, Samuel was a prophet. He was talking to Saul. He said, When you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribes of Israel? Because he was the king of Israel. And did not the Lord anoint you king over Israel? Now the Lord sent you on a mission. Everyone say mission. Amen. Listen, you've been born, taken out of darkness into light to fulfill a mission. You'll never be satisfied till you fulfill it. Amen. And said, go and utterly destroy the sinners. Destroy the what? Sinners. Now I want you to grab hold of something like this. He said the Amalekites and fight against them until they were consumed. Why? Because Amalekites were Nephilim. They were the offsprings of the fallen angels that went into women and produced offsprings. This was a tribe of Nephilims. Some of them were giants. And the Lord said, I want you to go out and destroy all of them. <clears throat> In verse 19, <clears throat> and he said, then, then why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you swoop down on the spoil and do evil in the sight of the Lord. And Saul said to Samuel, But I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and gone on the mission in which the Lord sent me and brought back Agog, king of Amalek. Did he tell him to do that? No, he told him to kill him. I have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took of the plunder and sheep and oxen, the best of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice to the Lord your God in Gilgal. Was he justifying? The Lord say, kill everyone, right? See, this is where the compromise comes. He went there according to the will of God, but he didn't fulfill the will of God. This is how the enemy works. Influence of evil. In verse 22, so Samuel, the prophet, said to Saul, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices? In other words, the, the sacrifice of animals. As in obeying the voice of the Lord. In other words, what did God want better? The sacrifice of animals or our obedience? Obedience. obedience. He said, To obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed than the fat of the rams. For rebellion is a sin of what? Ah, rebellion is the presence of evil. It's called witchcraft. So there's an evil influence, isn't there? And stubbornness is an iniquity and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected you from being what? King. Being what? King. king. Wow. So Saul, God rejected from being king. Now God was getting ready to do something. Go to uh, verse 16, uh, chapter 16. So did Saul open himself? Did, now, I want you to grab hold of something because when Saul disobeyed God and God said, I'm going to remove you from king, he was demoting him. In other words, he was lifting his presence from him. And chapter 16, in verse 14, would you read it with me? It says, but the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. Does everybody see that? Because of what? His disobedience. See, there are people that are disobeying God, don't even know the Spirit left them. They're out there still doing whatever. They have no idea the Spirit left them. Because God knows what goes on behind closed doors. He knows what your heart is at. He knows what your attitude is. 
And we're either earning the trust or losing it. And when you lose the trust of the Lord, I can tell you the Spirit of the Lord will lift from you until he draws you back into repentance. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and what happened? Come on, read it. A, a distressing spirit from the Lord troubled him. That is a spirit of torment. It is a demon. It was tormenting him. It's also called a spirit of fear. Tormenting him. And Saul's servant said to him, Surely a distressing spirit from, the, from God is troubling him. In other words, they said, Ah, a demon. A disembodied spirit. Let our master now command your servants who are before you to seek out a man who is a skillful player on the harp and it shall be that he will play it with his hand and when the distressing spirit from God is upon you, you shall be what? Right. Well, in other words, that spirit will leave. Does everybody get that? Why? Because in God's presence, spirits leave. Amen. That's why you got to worship. Amen. Without worship, you're going to get Amen. tormented. Amen. Oh, you may know the word, but you can't practice it. Why? Because only the anointing, the power of God, comes from the Spirit of God. It's not by might nor by power, but by my Spirit, says the Lord. That's why there's a lot of people who go out there and quote scriptures. And they go home and beat their wives. They go home and lie and get high. They go home and smoke and do all kinds of other stuff because there's no power. Quickly criticizing everyone else, but they're practicing the same things they criticize. Amen? No freedom. So the distressing spirit, torment, fear, anxiety, stress, mistrust. This, God still was protecting Saul by having someone praise and worship around him. And that person that he brought around Saul was King David. And King David was a worshiper. God anointed David to become king, but David didn't become king until almost 12 or 14 years later or something. It was a period of time, I don't remember. But anyways, so David, or, or king of Israel, so in that period of time, David was around King Saul, praising and worshiping to bring in the presence of God because David now carried the anointing, the spirit of God that was protecting Saul. And then Saul eventually went after David. See, Saul became religious. David was looking at the spirit. Saul became religious. And religious spirit hates. They deny all the other stuff. All the gifts earned. No casting out devils. No praying in tongues. All of these other things. Because a religious spirit deals with two things. Fear and pride. And you can only interpret this word of God by the Holy Spirit. He's the only one that can truly interpret this word. Other than that, man tries to interpret themselves and they're way out of tune, way out of time, and way out of boundaries. Is everybody okay? So we see something here. Now look at Here the Lord was protecting the, li uh, the, life, of, well, the life of Saul. Amen? Amen? For a period of time until it was time. But now, now I want you to look at something. Did Saul miss opportunities? Yes. You know how many times people miss opportunities? They miss so many opportunities because of disobedience and they fall into that realm because the word tells us that when we fall into that realm of disobedience, we can't see things coming. Because one of the things the enemy does is blind. He likes to put the scales back on, the veils on the eyes. So that we can't see the good things of God coming. We can't grasp them. We miss them. We miss great opportunities. Is everybody okay? Amen. Praise God. Romans 6. And because sin is the presence of evil, always trying to influence you to commit an act. You think we need to recognize those things? You think we need to be sensitive to those things? Amen. Romans 6 verse 12. Remember, freedom is learned. Trust is 
earned. Hallelujah. Let's speak it. Therefore, do not let sin do what? Reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lusts. And do not present your members as an instrument of unrighteousness to sin, but present yourselves to God as being alive from the dead, and your members as instruments of righteousness to God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under the law, but you are under grace. Grace means what? God's plan. How are you going to know what grace is? The Word of God. What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law, but under grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that whom you present yourselves slaves to obey? You are that one slaves whom you obey. Whether of sin leading to what? Death or obedience leading to righteousness. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of sin, yet you obeyed from the heart. From where? The heart. That from uh, that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. And having been set free from sin, you became slaves of righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you were presented your members as slaves of uncleanness and lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for what? Holiness. Holiness. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. death. But now having been set free from sin and having becoming slaves of God, you have your fruit to what? Holiness and the end what? Everlasting life. Verse 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So in other words, he said, if you're truly in, in the spirit, you're in Christ, you are no longer sinning. It doesn't mean you won't be tempted. But you're not allowing sin to have dominion over you anymore. Why? Because the power and the presence of God that is in you is greater than he was in the world. It doesn't mean you won't make a mistake. Like I said, you might drop a hammer on your toe and say something you shouldn't. Like snap. I don't know. Oh, snap. You may say something worse than that. But you repent quickly. Does everybody get it? Because you're sensitive to God's presence. Oh. You may say something you shouldn't have. You may thought something. See, one of the things the Lord wants to do is reset boundaries of your thoughts. Reset boundaries of your tongue. Reset boundaries of people, places, and things. Reset boundaries of things that you accept and things that you reject. We are on a reset stage right now. Amen. Amen. Amen? So we see that there's two laws here, isn't there? There's the law of sin and death. Amen? Amen. And then there's the law of life. And again, this, the law of the spirit of life is to Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Romans 7, verse 21. Free from sin. Oh, glory. Is everybody there? Amen. I find then a law that is evil present with me, the one who wills to do good. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members warned against the law of my mind, my thoughts. Does everybody get that? He sees a law that's warring against his thoughts. And bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Remember, your old man that is still in you. He is an offspring of the devil. He was born in darkness. He loves rebellion. He loves lust. He or she does everybody get it? That's why you must be born again. You get a new spirit, but the old man is still there. It's now your flesh. So you must have dominion. And you separate yourself from the old man by getting filled with the spirit of God. But I see another law of my members warned against the law of my mind, my thoughts bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Body of death. See, now your old man is considered your flesh. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with 
the thoughts, the mind, I myself serve the law of God. What is the law of God? Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. But with the flesh, the law of sin, which is do what thou feel like. Does everybody get it? Praise God. Romans 12. Guess we're hanging out in Romans today. Take a trip to Rome today, okay? We ain't going to go see the Pope. He needs to repent. Hallelujah. He needs to get filled with the Holy Ghost and repent so nobody kisses his hands no more. Plum nuts. Romans 12, verse 1. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. And do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed by the renewing of your thoughts. That you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So we need to renew our thoughts. And we're going to renew it by cooperating with the mind of Christ and feeding our new spirit with the word of God by eating and drinking of the spirit of God. Has everybody got it? Go to Proverbs 23. Because what you sow is what you reap. Listen, we used to get calls all the time from people wanting to come to a service who are bound by drugs and alcohol to get free. And before they would come, I would tell them, read the daily deliverance prayer and daily confession seven times. Because I'm not praying for you until you sow. And there are people during worship, I won't go pray for them. They want to get prayed for, I ain't praying for you. Not until you begin to sow. Because when I lay my hands on you, it's like laying something on stone, on rock. Can't receive. Because they haven't sowed. Is everybody okay? Amen. All glory. Proverbs 23, is everybody there? Amen. Good. We're going to start at verse 6, please. 23.6. Do not eat what? The bread of a miser, compromiser, nor desire his delicacies. Amen? Amen? Don't eat bread. Don't hang out with those boneheads. Nor desire his delicacies. For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Hello. In other words, what he's intaking is causing his thoughts. Now, I want you to know this is not about food. It's about spiritual. This is spiritual food. There's a lot of people out there eating junk food and causing weird thoughts. Physically and spiritually. <laughs> For as he thinks in his heart, so he is. Eat and drink, he says you, but his heart is not with you. And the morsel you have eaten, you will vomit up and waste your pleasant words. Wow. So what you're intaking, what you speak, is what you eat. What you eat is what you think. Has everybody got it? So when we start speaking the things of God, we start renewing our thoughts. To be renewed means bring to remembrance. You're bringing things to remembrance. Is everybody okay? Oh, hallelujah, Romans 8. We're going back to Rome. We won't hang there too long. In verse 9. Hallelujah, let's speak it. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if indeed the spirit of God is dwelling in you, or if you're cooperating with him. Amen. 
Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he's not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of what? It's dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of what? Righteousness. That's why your flesh body cannot enter heaven. It's going back to dust. Amen? Your spirit and soul go home. But your body going back there. Unless you're not right with God, then your soul is going to hell. Verse 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. In other words, your mortal body will be changed in the twinkling of an eye. It won't be dust. In fact, Jesus' body was not made of dust. It was made of the word. Hello? Does everybody get it? Jesus' body was not dust. His body came from the word of God. The Lord said, I prepared a body for you, made from the word. That's why the word became flesh, not the dust. Amen? All grab what the Spirit is saying today. <clears throat> Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the what? Not to the flesh, but to live according to the nor, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you're going to what? You're going to die because uh, there won't be an entrance home. You know how many believers are out there still fornicating? Thinking because they accepted Jesus as Lord 20 years ago that they can still just shack up together? They can still go out and parties and do all, all the things? Well, let me tell you, they're in a big surprise when they get home because they're not getting home. And all those preachers that preach this stuff, blood is on their hands. Because they were deceived and they passed that deception down. Hello? So you think God rescued you for a reason? You think you're here for a reason? Amen. To be armed and dangerous to declare the truth. Because only truth, look at you can know the truth and not be free. You must practice the truth to be free. Takes cooperation, doesn't it? Verse 13, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will what? You will live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are what? Sons of God. I love it. So in the Spirit, by cooperation, amen, and the Word, one of the things that begins to happen is when you get filled with the Spirit of God, you begin to see things differently. Only to be staying filled with the Spirit of God can you have dominion over sin. Does everybody get it? And one of the things we don't want to do is grieve the Spirit by attitude, motive, or, do, or words. Intense. Is everybody okay? Amen. Christ in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of cooperation, which produces righteousness. Where there's no cooperation, it produces lawlessness. We want to be free from the sin of death by sowing in the Spirit, fulfilling the law of life. The law of death and sin in us is still there. Does everybody got it? It's in the old man. We want to have dominion over that all the time. Your flesh is battling against you besides every demon in hell. So you have an outward battle, but you have an inward battle. That's why God gave us the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, so that we can overcome not only the inward battle. See, if you can't overcome the inward battle, you won't overcome the outward battle. Oh, hallelujah. The law of sin, of death and sin, is in us, but is dead when you are filled with the Spirit of God and cooperate. Amen? Amen. So in this, God has given us power to overcome all sin. We get a new character in us. There's a new character. You're still the same person, but you're a new spirit. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're still, you're, you can look in the mirror and still say in the same spirit, but inside you're the same person, but you're inside you're different. When my wife first saw me after we were divorced and whatever, and I got off the plane and she looked at me, and she walked up to me. She, she said, man, you look the same. But she poked me and said, you're an alien. Because I was totally different. My countenance was different. 
Everything was different. I was still the same Moog, you know, same face. But my countenance was totally different because there was a change within. And when that change starts within, there's a change out. Amen? So the baptism of the Holy Spirit is to be baptized into the death of self. Amen. Ooh. It is to be baptized in the death of self and the power to fight so that you and I could follow. Is everybody okay? Amen. The man filled with the Holy Spirit is no longer a man anymore. I don't know how words express this, but we're no longer human. We have human attributes, but we're eternal. We think eternal. We live eternal. We speak eternal. We speak another language. That's why people don't understand you sometimes. You know, you'll be at a place, somebody will say something, you'll say, who told you that? I say, what? <laughs> what you're trying to do is bring them to an arena of who influenced you. Where's that influence come from? So you're quoting scripture and they're like, what? Because the world can't, doesn't understand. The word, the, those that are in darkness cannot understand. And they're not gone until they come into the light. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, we don't rest no more upon human plans, but on eternal plans. But we use human influence to fulfill an eternal agenda. Hello? It's the same thing with the wisdom. The wisdom we get from above, we use to, uh, the wisdom of the world to work for our advantage. Does everybody get it? The wisdom of the world does not use us. Does everybody got it? Same thing with money does not use you. You don't serve money. You serve the Lord. Money should serve you. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. 1 John chapter 3. Is everybody okay? okay. Glory. Free from sin. In verse 4. First John chapter 3 and verse 4. Whoever commits sin is an idiot. <laughs> Whoever commits sin <laughs> also commits what? Lawlessness. And sin is lawlessness. And you know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him there is no sin. Whoever abides in him does not sin. That's wild. Whoever abides in him doesn't sin. Amen. Whoever sins has neither seen him nor known him. So you got people that are saying that they're believers, but they're out there sinning like crazy. They don't know him. They say they know him. Yeah, I know Jesus. Yeah, they heard about him. But they never met him. See, you can get a Sports Illustrated and read all the stuff you want. You can actually almost know that person, but never meet him. See, Jesus wants to have a personal encounter with every one of his children so that they all know. And one of the ways he has that encounter is through the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Verse 7. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Wow. Whoever has been born of God does not sin. For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he has been born of God. In this, the children of God and the children of the devil are manifested. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does, the, does not love his brother. Praise God. Has everybody got it? So when you practice righteousness, you're sowing in the Spirit. Has everybody got it? When you practice righteousness, you're actually sowing in the Spirit, aren't you? And by sowing in the Spirit, you're producing the fruit of righteousness. And, and you're fulfilling because you're denying yourself, aren't you? You're getting filled with the Spirit. You're empowering to fight. You're rejecting the influence of sin and the powers of darkness. And you're beginning to align yourself up with the will of God. 
We're going to talk more about that. Not today. Hallelujah. Go to 2 Timothy 2. <clears throat> 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 20. Is everybody okay? Amen. You're grabbing hold of this. So it's no longer sin no more. It's free from sin. Let's speak. But in the great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, cleanses himself, if you will cooperate with the Spirit of God so that he can cleanse you, does everybody get it? Cleanses himself from the latter. In other words, open up your closets and get rid of the old stuff. For he will be a vessel of honor, sanctified and useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lusts, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. In other words, be careful. Associations will bring impartations. Hallelujah. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle in all, able to teach in patience, in humility, correcting those who are in opposition. If God perhaps will grant them repentance, so that they may know the truth, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Senses. I want to talk about those senses very quickly so that you and I become, our senses are restored. One of the things God wants to do is bring your senses restored. In these senses, the first sense that you must have is called conviction. Amen. Conviction. So anything that you're doing, any decision you make, whatever you're doing, you're always looking to be for conviction. Why? Because if you're looking for conviction, if it's not there, then you know it's cool. Does everybody get it? Because the whole conviction is also considered correction. Okay, Lord, what am I? If I'm receiving, I'm looking for conviction in everything. If I'm not looking for conviction, then my senses are dull. So the first thing I should be looking for is conviction from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Does everybody get it? Whether I'm doing something right or not. Why? Because if, if the Holy Spirit is trying to convict you and you're rejecting it, you become a stumbling block to you and others. The second sensitive thing we should do, why? Because conviction brings exposure. Does everybody get it? It exposes your enemy, exposes your impurities. The second thing we want to be sensitive to is confession. Amen? Because when you confess it, it's considered, then you bring it to what? Repentance. Amen? Does everybody get it? So when, when there's a conviction that comes, we want to confess that sin. Amen? We don't justify it. We don't reason it. We don't jump around it. We want to get rid of it. So we put it under the blood. So conviction will bring exposure of the sin. Confession will bring removal of the sin. Covering. Amen? And that will bring conversion. Does everybody get it? You, that will bring you a conversion. It's a, it's, a, it's a process going forward, not going backwards. And that's where the word says, be transformed, not conformed. Amen? So you're being transformed in the in your image of Christ on a constant basis. This is not a one-time event. It's a lifetime event. This is how your life is if you're a true Christian. Amen? Is everybody okay? Praise God. 1 Peter chapter 1. Woohoo! Free from sin if you cooperate. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 13. Let's speak it. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind, your thoughts. Be sober, rest your hope fully upon the grace, the plan of God that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts as in your ignorance, 
But as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all of your conduct. Hmm. Because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay in this realm in fear of God. Knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received from traditions from your fathers or from men, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifested in these last times for you, who through him you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, through the Spirit, obeying the truth through the Spirit, in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is as a flower of the grass. The grass withers, and it flowers, falls away. But the word of the Lord endures forever. Now this is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. Amen? Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask you to protect this word by applying the blood of Jesus upon this seed so that it penetrates every part of our being, bringing to remembrance, bringing it to our thoughts by the Holy Spirit. Ask him to be continually filled and dressed and possessed by the presence of God so that his righteous character can be expressed through us and the world may see him and not us in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen.